going to talk about how to solve genetics problems. Your textbook has a couple of pages that give you steps for solving genetics problems, and we're going to use these steps to solve the problem that is shown below. All right, so take a moment and read the problem here. when you start to solve genetics problems, you need to create a key so that you can keep track of your dominant and recessive alleles. So that's the first thing that we are going to do, create a key. All right, and this talks about citrullinemia, so I'm just going to pick the letter C, and remember, we use the capital letter for the dominant allele. We use the lowercase letter for the recessive allele. All right, the next thing we want to do is summarize the information in the problem. All right, so we'll start here in the first sentence. It um, tells us that cattle that suffer from citrullinemia um, ha uh, are homozygous recessive calves. You know that if you have two recessive alleles, that that particular calf will um, suffer from citrullinemia. All right, later on in the problem, it gives us information about genotypes for a cow as well as a bull. So it tells us that the cow is heterozygous for citrullinemia. So we can write the cow's genotype as heterozygous, so a dominant allele and a recessive allele. the cow's genotype. And then we have information about the bull, um, and it is homozygous dominant, so two dominant alleles. Okay, I should also point out um, other problems might give you information about uh, offspring, so you want to use that information if it is available. And Unless otherwise stated, you should assume that an individual is normal. That means it doesn't have a disease. All right, so now we're ready to move on to our next step, which is to sketch the parental chromosomes and gametes. All right, so we have a homologous pair of chromosomes for the cow, and um, the cow is heterozygous, so unreplicated chromosomes might look something like this. So this is for the cow. And you end up with gametes that either have the dominant allele or the recessive allele. So the gametes would look something like this. You either have eggs that have the dominant allele or egg cells that have the recessive allele. Now for the bull, I'm going to show homologous chromosomes here, and the bull is homozygous dominant, so each one of those chromosomes has the dominant allele, so for sperm, you'll end up with sperm cells that have the dominant allele. All right, so once you have that information, you can then make a Punnett square. And you will take the gametes that you made in step three and use them in your Punnett square. So we've got the two um, alleles form the cow, so the dominant allele here and the recessive allele here, so those are two possibilities for gametes, and then for the bull, there are the two possibilities for gametes. Okay, and then we'll fill out the Punnett square. And then we want to calculate the genotypic and phenotypic ratios. Oh, we'll look and see all the different genotypes that we have. All right, so I see 
homozygous dominance. We have two individuals that are homozygous dominant and heterozygous. There are two individuals that are heterozygous. Um, we can actually reduce this. If you divide each side by two, you would have a ratio of one to one. Okay, so this is our genotypic ratio. And then our phenotypic ratio, we can refer to our key here, and we know that individuals that are homozygous recessive have citrullinemia, and then individuals that have at least one dominant allele are normal. All of the offspring here have at least one dominant allele, so for our phenotypic ratio, we would have um, four normal calves. All right, and our last step then is to actually answer the question. So if you look back here, our question asks, what is the probability that a calf inherits citrullinemia? Well, we have four normal calves, so none of them will inherit citrullinemia. Um, it asks for a probability, so we can give that as a percent. There is a 0% chance that any of the calves will inherit citrullinemia. All right, so to summarize, um, once you have read the problem, you want to create a key so that you are using the same letter for uh, the dominant and recessive alleles. So you use the capital letter for the dominant allele, lowercase letter for the recessive allele. You then want to summarize the information that's in the problem. Look for information about uh, parental genotypes and phenotypes, as well as the genotypes and phenotypes of the offspring. So in this problem here, we had information about calves, about offspring that die because they are homozygous and have citrullinemia. Uh, oh sorry, homozygous recessive, and they have citrullinemia. So we know that individuals that are homozygous recessive will have citrullinemia, and therefore the dominant allele is normal. We then had information about the genotype for the cow. The cow was heterozygous, and information about the bull. The bull is homozygous dominant, so we wrote that information down. And based on that information in the problem, we sketched the parental chromosome and gametes. So remember, you have homologous chromosomes. So for the cow, here you see one of the pairs of this homologous chromosome has the dominant allele, as shown up here in the genotype. And then the other chromosome in this homologous pair has the recessive allele. And if you were to go through meiosis, you end up with egg cells that either have the dominant allele. In fact, you have two egg cells that have the dominant allele. And you'll end up with two egg cells that have the recessive allele for this gene. We did something similar with the bull. The bull is homozygous dominant, so each homologous pair of chromosomes has the dominant allele. So all of the sperm that this bull produces are going to have the dominant allele. And then we made a Punnett square, put the um, possible gametes for the bull here on at, at the top of our Punnett square and the possible gametes for the cow on the side of the Punnett square, filled that out, calculated our genotypic ratios here and our phenotypic ratios, and then we made sure once we had all of this information, we actually read what the question was asking. It's asking us the probability that a calf inherits inherits citrullinemia, and 0% of the calves will inherit citrullinemia. All right, so this is a basic example, but hopefully you will be able to apply these steps when you um, start to solve more complicated genetics problems.